We're continuing with our Solving Mathematics in Movies series and today we're focusing on the film Gifted, the famous blackboard problem. Let's get solving. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm currently an astrodynamics software engineer and I'm a Cambridge mathematics graduate. Today we're going to be focusing on the film Gifted, which is one of my favourite films. I absolutely love it. If you haven't seen it before, it's essentially about a child genius and there's a very famous scene in it where she's posed with this problem on the blackboard and she spends a bit of time looking at it like, I'm not going to solve this. And then she explains to her grandma, I think it is in the film, well, the problem was unsolvable. So she goes back, corrects the problem and then solves it. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video. Before I dive into the video, I'd just like to say we have previously solved the famous blackboard problem from Goodwill Hunting. If you want to check out that video, it is on my YouTube channel. But today we're going to be moving on to the film Gifted. So this is the famous problem in Gifted. And what happens is Mary, the young girl in it, she goes to the, goes to the blackboard and she sees this problem and she spends a while looking at it. And she essentially goes away and says it's unsolvable. Now this is the uncorrected problem. So this is the problem she's first posed with. And this video is going to be separated into, firstly, we're going to look at why she was right in correcting the solution. And then we're going to look at the full solution. So what Mary does is she goes up to the blackboard and she adds a minus sign into here. And then she adds absolute values around the sigma value here. So we're going to look at why that was necessary. When you look at the graph between what we had previously and the graph of this value here, what we have is the graph for the previous solution, or the previous problem, should I say, has a graph looking something a bit like this. And essentially what you can notice is she's going to be performing an integral and integrals involve looking at areas under curves and such. And what you'll notice is here, essentially it is diverging. So what she concludes in the film is it's not even solvable. We, we can't solve it. So that's the reason for the negative sign because when you add the negative sign, now any mathematicians watching this might actually recognize the problem on here and essentially it's a normal distribution. So let's see if I can <laughs> draw a good normal distribution, which I used to be so good at these. That's, yeah, I mean, it's questionable, but we'll 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 give it we'll give it. So anyway, so we have a normal distribution here, and what Mary is right in saying is, well, this this converges. Now the absolute sign itself at the end, and I'll I'll show you. I'll explain how we get to this solution. But at the end, you essentially have something like i squared equals two pi omega squared, and very rightly, if you take the square root of each side, then you get square root of 2 pi and then the absolute value of sigma. Now the absolute value isn't normally uh, given in normal distributions and that is just because we automatically automatically assume that sigma is greater than zero. So it's quite a it's quite a nice little trick. Um, it's something that when I first watched the film and I noticed what she'd done I was like okay the negative sign makes a lot of sense after looking into it and then the the absolute values obviously make a lot of sense when you think of just square rooting a value. Um, but it's something that it's a little bit more intricate because obviously when we look at normal distributions, we just automatically assume that sigma is greater than zero. So I like that touch on the film. It was, it was very nice. But yeah, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this problem. So the problem itself gives you a bit of a hint and it says, first show this. So what we can do is we can start by defining an integral and we can say okay let we're going to let i equal the integral in the question so that is this here so we're going to let that equal i okay so if we let that equal i what we can then say is okay well let's square this and this gives you if we just copy this it gives you this squared. And then if we write that out fully, what we get is, obviously we have two different integrals here, so we can't have the same uh, variable in here, so we can't have x for both. So what we can have is minus x, which is what we had normally, and then we can add a y into here as well. So we're gonna have it as y. You could have it as anything you want. The reason we stick with y is just because it's mentioned in the question here, so we have a y value there. So we have, 
this now. So what we've done is we've taken the integral that we want to show, we've let that equal i, because it's an integral, and then we've squared it and just added in some terms to make the mathematics correct. So this is what i squared equals. Now, if you remember anything from integrals, this can be written as this for this given problem. Okay, and again, this here is i squared. What we want to do is we want to take this i squared value, which is exactly what we have here. So you'll notice that we have found, so you'll notice that this here is the same as this in the question. Okay, so now what we want to do is just prove that it equals 2 pi sigma squared. And then from there it's easy, we just take the square root and we get the original integral back. So let's focus on i squared for now then. So what we want to do is make a transformation. And we're going to make a transformation that is x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. Now you might remember this is polar coordinates, if you remember from anything in mathematics. It's polar coordinates and you'll notice that x and y both depend on two variables. There's r and there's theta. Now in mathematics, when we want to take the derivatives of x and y here, we have to be very careful, and that's because they both depend on r and theta, and that means the problem is dependent on two variables. Now we can start by saying that dx is the same, and hopefully you remember this from mathematics, but don't worry too much. Um, because we have two variables, we have to consider the, dif the differentials with respect to both of them. So we have dr, partial dr by dx by dr plus partial d theta by dx by d theta. And then the same for dy as well. We have dr by dy dr plus d theta by dy d theta. And this is just the form of the differential of dx when you have two variables. So what we can do is we can rewrite dy dx dy, following a very similar approach to what we've just done previously, we can take the Jacobian of dx by dr, dx by d theta, dy by dr, and dy by d theta. So we have the Jacobian here, and we have dr d theta. Okay, so all that's left to do is just fill in for values that we know. So we know that partial dx by dr cos theta. Again, dx by d theta gives us minus r sine theta. Partial dy by dr, which gives us sine theta. And then we have this for partial dy by d theta. And then we have the multiplication here. We can take the determinant of this, which is just this times this minus this times this. So we have r, which is going to be multiplied by both variables here. We have cosine squared plus, because we're doing a minus minus, sine squared dr d theta. And for any of you that know trigonometric identities, this here is 1. So we just end up with r dr d theta. Now the reason we had to do that is because when we're going to make a substitution, we have to figure out what dx by dy is, and that's just because we have it in the integral here. So now that we have this value, dx dy, and we know what x and y are, we can substitute everything in. Okay, cool. So if we take i squared again, adding everything in, what we can say is we have i is between 2 pi this is first integral between 0 and 2 pi, and that's just because theta, the, the ranges for theta, is given by this here. So we know that, so we can amend the integral. And then the second integral is just going to be 0 to infinity, because r is always greater than 0. And then we have the exponential, which is going to be minus r squared, because we have x, we have x squared plus y squared. So again, if we do if we take out the values and substitute in, what we get is r squared cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, which, as we have just said, equals 1. But I'll just add that in in a second. We have 2 pi, we don't have pi, we have 2 sigma squared 
and then we have r d r d theta again we can simplify that because we know that cos squared plus sine squared is one so we have these values here and we have minus r squared over 2 omega squared r dr d theta. Okay, now that is the value for i squared in terms of the substitution that we have. Now what we need to do is do another substitution and that's just to allow us to solve this integral here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let u equal minus r squared over 2 sigma squared um, and again if we do some differentiation we find that du if we do du by dr is just going to give you du equals minus r over sigma squared so we can rearrange this and get what dr is which is minus sigma squared over r d, du and then we can just substitute this of this form here for dr into the integral. So let's substitute those in and we can say thus i squared is we're going to take the 2 pi out of the first integral because we can do that with the integral between 2 pi and 0 and then we are left with infinity 0 e to the u times r times minus sigma squared over r du which is just substituting everything in so then we end up with 2 pi sigma squared integral of e to the u du and then this is just some basic algebra in here substitute back in the value for u Substitute in the values for 0 and infinity, which give you 0 minus 1, which gives you 2 pi sigma squared. And that's great because we've solved that first part. So it says first show this integral here equals 2 pi sigma squared. And that's what we have done. So we have i squared equals 2 pi sigma squared. i equals the square root of 2 pi and the absolute value of sigma. And there we go. That is the full solution and the full solution that Mary does in the film. Awesome. So that is the full solution to the blackboard problem in the gifted film. And I've explained why we had to add in the negative signs there and show you the full solution to it. So that is the full solution to the film gifted. If you have any other movie ideas that I can solve some maths in the movies and do a video on it, let me know. I'm making this a series on my YouTube channel. So if that's something you're interested in, then subscribe down below. But if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you all in the next one.